The Halo TV series debuts on Paramount Plus on March 24th, and it looks absolutely amazing. Good morning, good Monday morning to you. Let's kick off the week right. I'm Shane Satterfield from Sifted, and this is Good Morning Gaming for January 31st, 2022. It comes bright and early every weekday to our patrons who pledge at patreon.com sifted, and it's delayed a couple days for everyone else. If you like our content, we also have a separate podcast feed for our flagship show, Game Face, that you can find by searching your favorite podcast service. You'll find the podcast versions of the rest of our content in the same feed you found this. So Paramount released a first full trailer for the Halo TV series on Sunday, and it really delivers the goods, in my opinion anyway. It sets up the plot, features a heaping helping of the Master Chief, including his voice, and includes all sorts of fan service like the first shot of the Covenant, Chief fighting elites, iconic weapons and ships, Cortana, oh man, the whole shebang. The special effects and the costuming look amazing. I highly recommend checking it out at sifted.net. I'm really impressed, and I assumed everyone else would be just as impressed too. And then I looked at the YouTube comments. <laughs> People complaining that it's not following the story of the games. People complaining about a human antagonist. People complaining Master Chief isn't voiced by the same dude. Don't get me wrong, there are some hopeful comments as well, but none that just come out and say, hey, this looks awesome. All we have to go on is this trailer, and I don't know how a Halo fan could watch it and not at least be optimistic. I'm here to tell you that it's okay to get excited about something even though it may not end up being as good as you thought. It feels like people operate on the internet constantly in fear of being wrong, tweeting or posting something that someone will dig up later to embarrass them. Pro tip, no one does that unless you're a critic with a lot of visibility. So I say, let your fandom fly out there and be your true self. I think the show looks amazing. See, there, I just did it. Now it's time for some more stories from the top of your SIFs. Quantic Dream just won't stay out of the news. This weekend it was leaked that the recently announced Star Wars Eclipse is being designed similarly to Naughty Dog's The Last of Us. It could certainly mimic worse games, but that's a big commitment that could result in an extremely long development cycle. Rumors have already swirled about a 2027 release date, which is starting to line up. I have to admit, if I were CD Projekt Red, I would have given up on Cyberpunk 2077 by now. It's been on the market for over a year, and you gotta think that all its sales have pretty much dried up at this point. But a listing for the PS5 version of the game popped up on the PlayStation Store this weekend, including a release window from late February to early March. It's been promised all along, and this looks like one of the few promises related to the game that the studio isn't going to break. The new Perfect Dark game might be in significant trouble. First we heard that Crystal Dynamics had joined development to help it along, and now we found out that Studio for Hire, Certain Affinity, has also joined up. If you remember, we reported on this studio last week in Good Morning Gaming, and now we know which project it's going to be attached to. It's not looking good for Perfect Dark right now. It's been 16 years since the underwhelming Perfect Dark Zero. Maybe it's time for Joanna to just hang them up? For good. A game retailer in Belgium has gone the extra mile by adding warning signs to PlayStation 5 consoles in its store. It wants to make it blatantly clear to shoppers that Call of Duty may eventually be an Xbox exclusive. While it may be bad for business, the owners of the store have certainly earned their Xbox badge for 2022. If there are two games that are on shaky ground to release in 2022, it's Gotham Knights and Hogwarts Legacy. Both have been plagued by delays, and Hogwarts Legacy has dealt with developer controversy and rumors that its development has been rocky and blah, blah, blah. Warner Brothers has tried to squash those rumors by announcing this weekend that both games are still on track for 2022. Of the two, I'd guess Gotham Knights is the better bet. I'd actually be surprised if the next Harry Potter game isn't delayed out of 2022. <music> 
All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll tackle today's boss fight. Welcome to today's boss fight where I tackle random topics that may or may not be related to video games. For today's boss fight, I want to talk about predictions, which in many cases is trying to see the future or be clairvoyant. Predictions aren't just a thing in the gaming industry. They inhabit just about every corner of pop culture and entertainment. How many times a week do you see someone on social media or a podcast saying, I called it or I got that one? I'm not going to lie, I've done it many times myself. And why do I do it? Because for some strange reason, we've placed some sort of value in people we believe have the foresight to see what's about to happen or what's coming. But how does that information actually help? Where does that value come from? Is it that we all feel better about ourselves if we're never caught off guard? Is it that we use those takes to form our own opinions? that we then share with others, essentially giving us ammo for various conversations? Or is it that weird innate drawl to always be first, no matter what it is? Is there any value in any of this when just about any prediction is more likely to be false than true? Sports games predictions actually have some monetary value. If you're good at predicting who's going to win a football game conceivably, we can use that information to place bets or make better starts in our fantasy football leagues. That's information with not just mental equity, but real financial equity. But the rest of it? What value is there in knowing that Diablo 4 is coming out in three months instead of 12? Or that the first Game of Thrones spinoff is releasing next spring? Perhaps in those cases, the value is simply the value of the news itself. Having information people want to know, which results in clicks and taps, which results in ad revenue. But why do we want to know so bad? There's no denying the dispositional value of a pleasant surprise, something we rarely get anymore. Yet we spend so many waking hours trying to make sure that we're never surprised. Think about it. We spend so much time trying to make sure we're never caught off guard, that we know everything before it happens. That's crazy. We even place value in predicting things that everyone knows will eventually be true, like a new Mario or Zelda game is in development. Honestly, life is kind of dull when you know everything is going to happen before it actually happens. So one of my New Year's resolutions is to strive to know less in 2022. That's right. One of my resolutions is to strive to know less this year. I know that's a tall order, working on a video game news aggregation website every day, and maybe I'll apply this more to other things I'm interested in, like entertainment, television, film, things like that. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've kind of done that already in my life, but I just feel like I've lost some of that special kind of joy that can only be generated by a completely unexpected, shockingly awesome surprise. I'm rooting for a lot more of those this year, Maybe you should too. All right, thanks for listening to Good Morning Gaming. I hope your week gets off to a great start. I'm Shane Satterfield, and you should do what the cool kids do, and follow me on Twitter at Dinfire, and follow Sifted at Sifted Games. We'll be back with another show tomorrow morning, but before then, make sure you seize today, because there will never be another.